3D animes don't have the best reputation, and for good reason. They are often poorly animated, and though there are plenty of examples of fantastic ones, the sheer volume of horrible treaty is overwhelming, with the 2016 adaptation of Berserk being the most well-known offender. However, if Berserk 2016 is what happens when everything in a treaty anime goes extraordinarily wrong, then Hosokai no Kuni, or Landed Lustrous in English, is what happens when everything goes extraordinarily well. From the fluid animation to the breathtaking imagery, this show is a visual spectacle that I'm surprised more people aren't watching. It is a diamond in the rough that's most likely been buried under a sea of judgement and bias based on its 3D style. Which is a shame since this show, in my opinion, is one of the best of the season. And because of that, I want to talk about why Hosokai no Kuni is so fun to watch. And yes, potential spoilers ahead. As well as a disclaimer that this video is based on my viewing of the first six episodes of the show, which, as of recording, are the only ones to have been released. Hosokai no Kuni focuses on Phos, one of 28 immortal gems living on Earth, who wants to join their battle against the Lunarians, a race of humanoids from the moon who are hunting down the gems to turn them all into decorations and jewelry. But because of how incredibly fragile they are, Phos is kept away from the battlefield and is instead told to compile an encyclopedia for the gems. It follows their journey in coming to terms with their new position and doing their best to help the other gems. And if you're wondering why I'm using they, it's because these gems are also technically genderless. I mean, they're all immortal rocks that don't need to reproduce, so... Fuck it. Anime. It's admittedly a little convoluted, but ultimately tells a simple story we can all connect with. A story about someone trying to find their place in the world, trying to find their purpose and helping others to do the same. It explores its themes in subtle ways and takes care to develop them alongside its characters, especially Fos. Though we're only six episodes in, Fos has already had an interesting arc. They're initially presented as a naive, cocky gut-for-nothing who likes to complain, but it quickly shows us that there's more to this fragile rock than we realize. They're ambitious and determined, refusing to give up on their goals even if it means putting themselves in danger. But there's still someone who is lacking in experience and is quite often left at a loss as to what to do in various situations. They're a complicated character, full of admirable qualities with flaws that make them relatable. And this applies to the rest of the cast as well, such as the way the miserable and isolated Cinnabar seems to slowly develop feelings for Fos. Or how we see the unbearably sweet Diamond literally break themselves just so they can feel useful. It has a well-rounded cast of complex characters and explores some interesting and personal themes. But for as much as I like the story and characters, the biggest draw of the show for me is definitely its visuals. From the perfectly framed Sakuga moments to the little movements and expressions of each character, the animation is exceptionally well done. There's a lot of attention paid to the little details of each and every movement that pays off by making every motion hit just a little bit harder, whether it be for a convoluted action scene or a throwaway joke. And the imagery it uses is absolutely gorgeous. This show is chock full of some amazing pieces of cinematography, with many shots being good enough to turn into screensavers or even to frame and put up on a wall. I mean, look at this! The imagery is imaginative, vibrant and surreal in ways that both disturb and delight. I guess it only makes sense that a show about living gemstones would be this beautiful. Although, I do have some criticisms. For as good as the animation is, many scenes resort to using a lower frame rate, probably to save on render times. But these parts are quite jarring, especially when they're done right after a high-octane action scene. The character models can occasionally seem off, either looking oddly stiff or uncanny when looking at them from the right, or should I say, wrong angle. And the character designs themselves are quite repetitive. As you can probably tell, outside of Master Kongo, the gems' designs are practically identical with the only thing differentiating them being their hair. I understand that they're supposed to be genderless rocks, but Steven Universe had the same idea and look how many designs it managed to pull out of the bag. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of unique designs in the show, but it's hard to tell whether or not it's because they're well designed or just because it's something different. It feels like there's a bit of wasted potential here. And the backgrounds, for as nice as they look, often feel empty and lifeless. The show feels like it needs a little bit more polish. But I will admit, these nitpicks I have are outshined by the sheer quality of the show's execution. All in all, Hosokai no Kuni is a fantastic show that I think deserves a lot more attention. From its complex story and characters to its spectacular animation and imagery, it is an absolute joy to watch. Yes, it's a treaty anime that's actually good. A shocking concept, I know, but it's true. Don't let the 3D fool you into thinking it's gonna be another Berserk 2016, because so far it has been anything but. 
And though it's only six episodes in, I think it's well worth checking out. You could almost say that it's the hidden gem of the season. I just pray to God it doesn't end up like Kato. And yeah, those are my thoughts. Like I said at the end of my previous video, I'm gonna make these fun to watch, play, etc. videos more frequently and make them a bit more review based. That essentially just means I'll try not to spoil whatever I'm talking about. Might even do some episodes talking about why I didn't like something, but I generally prefer to focus on the good stuff, you know? Anyway, tell me what you think. If you agree, disagree, why you think of Hosekai no Kuni, how you feel about 3D and CGI in anime, etc. And thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this and want to see more, check out my last video where I examine how Hannibal crafts its dialogue. Or if you want to see some more 3D anime stuff, check out my video where I explain my thoughts on the use of CGI in 3D and anime. Or my critique of Kato the Right Answer, where I explain why I loved it and how it disappointed me. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe to come flag me. And hopefully, 